Good evening everyone, time for another member update. So this is the one hour chart of silver on netdania.com and you can see we're still in this pretty strong trend channel. You can see a lot of touch points on the top, not quite as many on the bottom, but it's definitely a strong trend channel. Uh, right now we're trying to challenge the top of it, although the MACD you can see is rolling over and volume has significantly dried up. So I think we're getting to an inflection point here. Uh, the 1750 price is pretty important because it's, you can see, very close to the original breakout point we had on the second run. Uh, we're, we're still on the run from the beginning of the year, but there, there is quite a bit of resistance in here and we failed one time. So I think fairly soon we're going to find the resolution to this trend channel. Now let's take a look at Bitcoin. You can see that over on OKCoin we're starting to get a breakout here. The dollar equivalent price at OKCoin is 1061 So that's getting fairly close to that old high. Now you can see really the resistance up above us let's try to get a little bit closer the resistance above us is a very small amount as far as just a moonshot and crash it was the takeoff from that uh, sort of parabolic rise into an utter parabolic rise and now you can see we're just trying to challenge that so that's a very very healthy market you can see bitstamp is up to a thousand thirty six same sort of thing on Bitstamp. The area that, that is above us is really just a small amount of trading. So the resistance is not really strong. Last one, uh, Bitfinex, same sort of thing. We're, we're getting ready to challenge that. I personally think that we're going to try to take out this high and then ultimately challenge this high back here. They're really not too far from each other. And as I pointed out before on OKCoin, uh, it was actually already surpassed in the, this recent run-up. It was actually the very day and minute and hour when we broke through and su surpassed that old high that we got that massive smackdown based on the Chinese uh, eliminating margin uh, on their market. So... Uh, BTC China, uh, same sort of thing. So uh, very, very strong bullish pattern on Bitcoin still. I think we're going to get new highs. So let's go over the article tonight. This is Egon von Greyers, and uh, he says something about, um, well, we'll just read it here about the, uh, about the only money that's any good. So Egon von Greyers is projecting a $10,000 gold price, a $500 silver price. Now you have to remember that that's going to be in today's money. That's not um, some nominal price, but he's saying that it's worth that in today's money. That's very important because he is expecting, as you'll see when we read here, a hyperinflation. So he says, the world is now standing on the edge of the precipice. The next phase could happen very quickly because we are now looking at a situation where every major nation in the world has an insoluble debt crisis. This does not just include all Western countries, but also China and Japan, most emerging market nations. When this situation unfolds in the next few years, gold is guaranteed to go well above $10,000 in today's money and silver over $500. Let's have a look at how gold has performed against the only real or true money that has ever existed. The reason why gold is real money, I'm not really sure why he said that's kind of contradictory, but I think he's talking about uh, dollars. The reason why gold is real money is because it's the only currency that nature has produced. Sadly, no money that man has produced has ever survived. The table below confirms history. In a short 45 years, the best performing currency, the Swiss franc, has lost 87% against gold, whilst the two worst ones, the dollar and the pound, have lost 97% and 98% respectively. So there's the chart of that, and you can see that the dollar and the pound there over the last 45 years have lost 97 and 98% of their value. 
Now there is a perfect example of the frog slowly boiling in the pot as they're turning up the temperature. Uh, you could not convince a man in the street that the currency that he uses is basically worthless. But it really is. It's lost 98%, 97% of its value. It's absolutely remarkable that the U.S. and U.K. currencies in just under half a century have lost all but 3 and 2% of their value. The table above confirms that all the above currencies will reach their intrinsic value of zero in the next few years. Something that has fallen in value by 87 to 98% is guaranteed to complete the journey until it has lost 100%. Anyone betting against that would be certain to lose his bet. So it's just not a question of if, but only of when. I've been predicting for a while that the overvalued U.S. dollar is the next currency to fall. Technically, it looks like the coming dollar collapse could have started. Trump's statement that the dollar is too strong might just be the catalyst needed. Bearing in mind that the world is now standing on the edge of the precipice, the next phase could happen very quickly because we are now looking at a situation when every major nation in the world has an insoluble debt crisis. This does not, uh, we already read that. We must remember that the few percentage points left to reach w a worthless currency for the countries above mean a further loss of 100% measured from today. So in this gold table lies the answer to what will happen next, which is a debt and dollar collapse, which will lead to global money printing of proportions never before seen in history. So clearly he is in the hyperinflationary camp. He's thinking that we're going to have a crash crisis and they're going to print their way out of it again. This hyperinflationary phase, which could take place in the next few years, will totally destroy the value of all money and also of many of the bubble assets that were financed by the credit boom. When this situation unfolds in the next few years, gold is guaranteed to go well above $10,000 in today's money and silver over $500. But we are, of course, not going to see today's money in a hyperinflationary world. Therefore, the gold and silver prices will depend on how much money is printed. A price of $100 billion or $100 trillion per ounce, like in the Weimar Republic, would not be impossible. But that is, of course, a meaningless level in today's terms. What is certain, however, is that gold and silver will vastly outperform inflation and therefore do a lot better than just maintaining their purchasing power. It is virtually impossible for most of us to fathom what will happen to the world's financial system, to currencies, and to precious metals in the next few years. But what is certain is that physical gold and silver at current prices represent the best form of wealth preservation and insurance that anyone can own. Owning precious metals in the coming crisis should not be an option but a necessity. So um, I've always liked Egon von Greyers. He's on uh, King World News, and he's a great interview. I love to listen to him. Uh, interesting point that he made that uh, no currency has ever succeeded. That's kind of interesting because we're actually looking at the first one that is succeeding, and it's Bitcoin. And what it has built into it is the very thing that is uh, a protection against the very thing that is causing the destruction of all these currencies he's talking about. It has a built-in scarcity. It's very much like gold. Uh, it's better than gold in some ways because it, it can be transmitted from any person to any other person in the world. So Bitcoin is the exception. I have no idea what Egon von Greyers knows or thinks about Bitcoin, but uh, he should think about that. So I wanted to cover a pick here that uh, I went through and checked all the lunars again. I always check Atmex, Provident Metals, JM Bullion, and Gainesville Coins. Now, for the most part, almost all of those had the current uh, rooster half ounce roughly from a low on some of them, about 1280 to a high of 13 something. The monkeys generally were, half ounce monkeys were up around 15 to 18 on all the sites. Nothing really standing out, but this coin absolutely stood out. Uh, the one ounce uh, roosters right now are around 30 bucks. I think you can get them for 28. But this coin here, this is the 2017 rooster with a lion privy and a mintage of 30,000. And you can see this is actually going for a low of 2374 if you buy over 100 of them. 
and you have to do that by check I believe yeah uh, or bank wire you're not going to get that price with the credit card but that to me is a phenomenal buy I have found in the past that the performance of the the colorized has been generally poor performance most people who stack silver don't want colored coins but when you're talking about the the privy series generally they surpass the regular series you can see here here's the lion privy and otherwise it's exactly the same as the other rooster but it's significantly cheaper as much as six dollars cheaper so this is definitely going to be my pick there's a lot of them left you can see they've got 2949 of these left so with these rock bottom prices now i admit that's still kind of a premium at 1750, you know, you're you're talking about a significant percentage premium. But again, we've had premiums expand fairly fairly high on the lunars and been sustained for a number of years now. Possibly probably going back maybe 3, 4, or 5 years we've seen sustained premiums on those. I don't think those premiums are going to come down between now and the next financial crisis. So this one is definitely a top pick for me. Uh, I don't see how you can go wrong with uh, 2374 on a one ounce uh, rooster, uh, just and also the lion privy added in. That's a fantastic deal. So back to the silver chart. You can see on the long term, if we pull all the way out to well, let's go to the weekly. You can see that we're trying to get both lines above the positive line on the weekly and, and engage this rally and get it to take off uh, it's still in place but it's fairly weak uh, it should be stronger than this uh, back on the monthly you can see that we're still waiting for the MACD to get a full cross because it what it's done is it's hovered below the uh, zero line is just kind of stuck there so you can see it's it's stuck we're waiting for the lines to cross we're also waiting to cross zero you can see we're at negative 0.19 not that far away from positive territory and again the last time we had a cross into positive territory on this indicator was the beginning of the massive bull phase uh, and you know what happened there so hopefully we have a repeat of history. The volume is is just phenomenal and continues to be phenomenal. So if we get a repeat of history, then we may see Egon von Greyer's prediction come true. And we'll talk to you next time.